Hey everyone, Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies and I got a pretty cool video to go over with you today. And it really has to revolve around the power output of a solar panel and pairing it up with the proper microinverter. A lot of our customers get a little confused because they think they need higher wattage microinverters to work with their high wattage panels. And that's not the case because this may come as a surprise, solar panels have two different ratings associated with them. And we recently brought from Frogbro, I know it's random product name, but it's a solar panel tester. So I'm gonna open this up, plug it directly into this panel and show you the wattage. We've had this out here uh, in the sun for uh, I'd say maybe two, two and a half hours. So it's gotten a bit warm, which is good because that's real world. Yeah, that's warm. And it's facing east. And so the front of our office is east facing. It's around 11 o'clock. And again, this is August 31st, September 1st for the date. So this is peak summer, good production, should be coming out of this REC panel. Now this is an older REC panel. It's an REC 370 watt pure. It's not an alpha pure, it's just the original pure. So it's a high performance panel, no doubt, but the STC rating is 370 watts. And that's where a lot of people get confused. So people would go, hey, I should have an IQ8A or IQ8H because that's closer to the STC rating. Wrong. You design around the NOCT rating or NMOT rating. Those are the nominal module operating temperature. So voltage and amps change in heat and in cold weather. And so you never actually re receive that high power output of the module, maybe once uh, a month out of the whole year, you know, in one month, maybe two months out of the whole year, you could, but it's marginal in, in, the, in the overall scheme of things. And depending on where you live, because we're here in California, you, you may never get close to it. So the NMOT rating, the nominal module operating temperature for this panel is closer to 280 watts. And that's a big difference. So here's the Frog Bro right here. Cool little device, as you can see. This is uh, rated for 1600 watts. So really nice kind of product. I'll leave a link down in the description below if you're interested in doing these types of tests. This is a cool little device, not too expensive. We use them for services so we can confirm that a panel's working uh, if there's any questionable questions about that. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna be doing more videos with this as well because I bought one for myself so I can do some videos on shade tolerances. Obviously this video we're talking about pairing it up properly with the right microinverter and giving you more insight in the actual power output of a panel. It's weird in the US, in North America, we sell based upon the STC rating. We, we talk about the, the, the power output it achieved in a lab. The rest of the world, Europe, and so on, they talk about the STC or the NMOT rating. They don't even, they don't mention the STC rating because you never get it. So, um, but yeah, so let's take a look. Brandy's gonna move a little closer while I plug this in in the back. So I got the solar multimeter plugged in and it's going to calibrate. So it's gonna just do auto MPPT and it's gonna give us some voltage on the panel. It should take a minute but it should start generating some power here uh, real soon. So as you can see, the VOC, that's the voltage open current, is 39.94 volts. The amps is 9.25. So the panel is generating 336.5 watts. Again, this is the peak of the summer. This has been outside for two hours. It's not even close to 370 watts. So it's, it's just very clear that to expect you will get the maximum is ridiculous. Now, what would we typically pair up with a 370 watt module? We'd use an IQ8 Plus. And that's what we did in the past when they were available, the IQ8 Plus and the IQ7 Plus. But as the wattage of the panels have increased, like to say 400 watts, which we have those Canadian Solar 400s, those modules were now pairing up with the IQ8M. And that is a much better pairing because that microinverter does allow for a higher input. But in this scenario, we're up to 339.7 watts. So pretty good. And it, it has to do with just this being a good panel. And it's the peak of the summer. So if you got a little clipping from this, 
during the peak of the summer, trust me, it is not affecting the overall production of your system. Our modeling software that we use, which if you're interested in getting a quote, use the link down below, it, it, it calculates all that. And I can basically see what is the clipping effect on a system over the entire year. In most cases, it averages out to be 0.1%. Really, really low clipping. Mind you, in this, I'm literally pointing the panel directly at the sun to try and get the most production I can out of it. We are up to 342.6 watts since I've plugged it in. This is peak summer production. Getting a little clipping on a 290 watt microinverter isn't going to drastically affect your overall production. Getting, paying more for that little bit of a better microinverter like the IQ8M going up a level, what are you gonna generate? An extra 100 kilowatt hours a year to spend an extra thousand dollars? It doesn't make sense. It's all about getting the most bang for your buck. And that's why we design around the nominal module operating temperature and so do so many other companies. Now, if this was a 500 watt panel and you put an IQ8 Plus on it, yeah, that's, you're gonna see some noticeable clipping. You are definitely losing power. That is not something I'm recommending doing. But it's all about designing the system properly and finding an installer that understands those things and gives you exactly what you're contracted for. So um, we got up to 340.5 and it doesn't look like it's going up any higher than that. Maybe Brandy can get one more shot of that. Cool. Well, that's it for us. And then be sure to subscribe to the channel because I want to do this same scenario and then shade it. What's shade a half of a panel? Because this is a lot of manufacturers have switched to a half cell design. As you can see, there's this big black stri stripe right down the middle. That's because this half acts independently than this half. And I want to show how valuable that is in a shading scenario and how microinverters and optimizers aren't necessary anymore because the solar panels actually have solar optimization built into them to account for shading. It's, it's cool stuff, what's, what's going on. So be sure to subscribe to the channel, of course, if you're interested in going solar or you know getting batteries, please visit online by using the link down in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.